coming. So my name is James Warburg. I'm a software developer at Electron Systems. We are a leading provider of PDF and document processing technologies. Uh, we're based in Vancouver, Canada. And today I am very excited to be here to uh, announce PDFJS, which is uh, our latest uh, product. Um, and PDFJS is a complete browser side. Toolkit. It can do everything you would expect. Uh, what you would want to do with the PDF using the browser, using without know, using a server, meaning rendering, annotating, uh, form filling, or splitting, um, anything you want to do. So today's presentation is sort of why we wanted to do this and uh, how we got there. So software is eating the world. This is a uh, pretty well-known uh, quote. And I'm not the first person to extend that to the web, the software. I mean, more and more of what we're doing with software, we're interacting it via a, uh, a web interface. And probably most of you don't need much convincing of that, but just as a brief visual example, these are the top, you know, these are exactly, these are the top 16 tags or topics on Stack Overflow. Uh, and the ones that are done in the red boxes are the ones that are directly web technologies or are frequently used uh, server side to support web sites. So, if more and more of uh, our time interacting with software is actually interacting with a web version of software, we have to ask ourselves, where does PDF fit in this new world? Um, how do we interact with PDF? And currently, there's sort of two um, use cases. Uh, so, this is what we're going to talk about in this presentation, is how we do that today, how web deals with PDF. Uh, and then can we do any better than how we're currently doing? And then finally PDF and JS uh, and what it brings uh, to the web world. So how does PDF fit into the web? The first sort of like standard use case here is you download it. There's a button download PDF that goes to your hard drive and you could save it later for you know, archival purposes or for your record. I think it's a perfectly valid use case and it's something that we will continue to want to do, um, but it's not really the topic of this conversation or this presentation, which is when you want the app to actually present the PDF to allow the user to view it within the app, to interact with it in some manner, uh, or to actually do something with the PDF in that app. So if you're doing it in the web, you need to then do something with it using web technologies. So typically when the user wants to do this within a web app, the PDF will be converted to some sort of web compatible technology, meaning a technology that the browser naturally knows how to deal with and to render. So it's converted to PNG, HTML, SVG, one of these formats. And these are solutions that we at PFTRON have been offering our customers for years. And for um, some of these pieces, they are acceptable for what, what, the, uh, what the app wishes to achieve. But they all suffer from um, a drawback, which is they all require this conversion, the server conversion. You know, when it's something like a PDF, the user has to upload it to the server, and the server has to convert it to some other format, which obviously takes time um, and costs money because the more and more you're doing this, you need to have more, more servers processing more and more PDFs, uh, which is you know, the scaling problem. So, server based uh, conversion is a bit of a, a, bit of a crutch. That we're using right now because PDFs can't deal with, or the web browsers can't deal with PDFs. So can can we do better? We have to ask ourselves, is there something we can do better? Because you know, all our customers are using this, we weren't fully satisfied with this as an end solution. So is there a way we can make PDF a first class web citizen? Meaning is there a way we can make browsers natively if you will understand and display PDF? Out the assistance of the server. So that was our main requirement. We wanted to process PDFs in the browser with no server side dependencies. So when we looked to do this, okay, how can we do this? And the sort of thing that really jumped out is the obvious solution was to use the new HTML5 Canvas element. Uh, it's used by the PDF.js project that you may have heard of as its sort of back end rendering engine. And so we looked at this and thought, okay, this is maybe something that we can build upon. 
to create an in-browser PDF uh, solution. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Canvas, I'll just briefly describe what it is and how it works and uh, how you can use it to show PDFs. So this is from the Firefox documentation Canvas API. Uh, the Canvas is an HTML5 element that can be used to draw graphics uh, using JavaScript. So as an example, they say you can use it to draw graphs or photos, create animations, do processing, or rendering. So the question for us is, okay, can we use this to render PDFs? So how would we use it to render PDFs? And how this works is, you would have a JavaScript program that can understand PDF model format. Uh, this, for example, is a PDF snippet that draws a red circle. And what you would then need to do is have it translated, if you will, to the equivalent in Canvas. So this is a Canvas snippet that draws a red circle. And uh, the PDF, you know, would then the Canvas when you get this match with a red circle. So on the left, is what it would look like when you look at it in the PDF browser. And on the right is what it would look, at, look like when you look at it in Canvas. So the, you would build on this. You would make your JavaScript program not only be able to understand red circles, but everything that PDF can contain. Uh, different colored circles, different shapes, text, images, et cetera, et cetera. Finding the Canvas equivalent uh, for the PDF representation. So we thought, okay, I mean, this looks like something we can use. But the more we dug into it and the more we looked at it, the more problems we were finding. And so I'll just outline a bit on what we found and why eventually we decided Canvas was not really the answer. Um, one like, immediate irritant was that all the Canvas rendering is done in the UI thread, meaning you give it too long to render, you're going to end up with these pop-ups on the, on the roadmap saying that you're know, too long, you want to close the tab, there's issues with this. Um, so that does not give a very good UI experience. The second is that Canvas is hardware accelerated, which at first sounds nice, but then you realize that it's actually relying on graphics drivers uh, from computers uh, that you know, ship with the graphics cards, and those can often be buggy. And meaning that the Canvas is going to do different things on different systems depending on what the drivers are. If you go and you look at the Chromium web forms on this, you'll have people complaining about it doing strange things. And the Chromium developers uh, commonly say, oh, it's, it's a bugging your graphics driver. Or restart your computer and update your drivers. And this obviously is problematic when you are trying to create a reliable PDF render. Uh, lastly, uh, Canvas and PDF have incompatible graphics models, meaning there's a certain certain items or certain things that the PDF can do and can understand and can represent within the PDF file, and there's another set that Canvas can understand and do. And there's a lot of overlap, but it is not an exact match. And so if you have a PDF that sits outside of Canvas, you run into trouble. And this is actually, it's actually a little bit worse than this because look at all the different implementations of the Canvas element or the different browsers, they all do it slightly differently and they're a bit inconsistent and they don't all implement the same things or they have different random uh, custom extensions. So you end up in this bit of this like either what was called the denominator or Quagmire trying to jam PDF and fit it into something, different things that don't really don't fit. And so like the red circle, I'll give you uh, something that doesn't work with Canvas. And on the left here, you have a text snippet of some text in PDF that is filled with a, a gradient. And the text and the gradient both have different transforms on them. And in Canvas, you can't do this. They both must have the same transform. So how can you represent this in Canvas when your program goes and tries to find the Canvas equivalent? So this is the page it came from. It's actually a page from the PDF specification. That red arrow is pointing at the text I showed you on the left. And when you try to render this using pdf.js, which uses the canvas element, this is its output. Uh, and in this case, the text is just missing. And you can see that there are other problems created on this page as well, um, which is uh, troubling to say the least. Um, and when you see this sort of thing, uh, you really have to ask yourself, and this was talked about a bit at that uh, panel, is what makes a PDF viewer a PDF viewer? 
really primary value proposition of PDF is it looks the same everywhere. When I look at a PDF on my screen and I send it to you, I can be confident that you're going to see the exact same thing as I saw. There is a article online, um, the PDF Association website that was put up not too long ago. I think it puts it well. It's talking about PDF. It says it's a, a completely reliable experience and that the format's core value is based on its ability to reliably represent the document author's intent in all respects. And the more we looked at it, the more we saw that we just weren't going to be able to achieve this using Canvas. So we didn't think that uh, our customers would find this acceptable, and it certainly wasn't acceptable to us. So back to our requirements, something that we really now needed to, to be very aware of is we wanted to create something that absolutely correct rendering. So how can we do this? We want to render PDF in the browser. We want to have uh, no server-side dependencies for all this, and we need to have absolute correct rendering. So what we thought, what we found when we looked at this is that the answer to this didn't rely on the latest and greatest web technology. Uh, it was actually the answer, the answer was old. When you look at how reliable desktop renderers create render PDFs, they don't rely on system level um, graphics libraries to do it. They're not using DirectTV or GDI. They're not using core graphics like Preview on Mac. Um, they do it themselves. Uh, they do everything internally. This way they can guarantee that the PDF specification in its entirety is covered. Uh, they're not leaning on uh, buggy graphics drivers. They can offer you know, absolute control and absolute reliability in the PDF rendering. So, is this possible to do in uh, in browser? Uh, can we create a PDF rendering and it runs entirely in browser? And the answer is yes, you can. And it's exactly what we've done with PDFJS. PDFNetJS uh, processes the PDF completely in browser, entirely server side. I mean, entirely client side without any server component, and uh, gives you the correct rendering. And then beyond rendering which is really awesome, is this complete PDF toolkit. Uh, meaning it does more, far more than just rendering. Uh, you can do annotating, you can fill out forms, you can generate PDFs, split, merge, reorder, organize pages, redact, extract text, convert PDF, PDFA conversion validation, encryption, decryption optimization, linearization. Pretty much anything you would want to do with a PDF you can now do entirely client side. So the fact that there's no server is really important. And it takes a little while for this to like sink in uh, what the ramifications of this are. So what it really means is that without the server component, apps are easier to develop. They're more responsive for the end user. They're more reliable and they're more scalable. So I'll go over the reasons for this. One, they're easier to develop is there's no need to set up a server stack, at least as far as their PDF processing is concerned. You don't need to worry about figuring out all the, you know, how all the server stuff works and gets, getting the servers to do it. You do all client side. When you're developing the app, the programmer can keep the entire sort of model of how this is working like right in front of them on the client. They don't need to spread this application logic between the client and server back and forth, as well as do this like asynchronous client-server communication, which is always, um, always a nuisance, it's, uh, it's, it's easier to have bugs crop up in this. When they do crop up, they're harder to reproduce, uh, which means they're harder to fix. If it's all client-side, it's just far easier to reason about, um, which makes your developers faster and more effective. Uh, and then lastly, of course, because we're not converting to these other files. Uh, file formats, we avoid caching. And caching is always considered one of the hard problems in computer science, so in this case, you know, is my PDF partially vendor? Is it waiting in some, or partially converted? Or is it waiting in some conversion queue? Or did the person delete the original PDF, so not delete the cached version, or rename it, et cetera, et cetera? You just avoid all those uh, caching hassles. Um, secondly, apps are more responsive. Um, if you're dealing with local files, there's now no reason at all for the PDF to even hit the server. It can go entirely in the app. You can just open it close into memory, does everything right there. Um, cloud files can also, if you're dealing with a cloud file and you want to save it back to your computer, you don't have to 
re-download it like you do with other solutions where because you're not, you don't really have the PDF in your browser, you just have an image or some other file format. Every time you need to do something with the PDF, it's, it's going back and forth. Um, apps are more reliable uh, because if you have some sort of problem with your PDF processing logic, if it's on a server, that means one user's problem or one thing crops up, all of a sudden the server's coming down, some poor engineer is getting a page at 3 a.m. to go fix it, all your users are frozen over their software. It's all done client side, it means all these instances are naturally isolated from each other. So if there's some crazy edge case, it's only going to affect that one user and the rest of the system will continue to run uninterrupted. Um, and it's also more secure. PDFs are essentially user input, so if you can avoid processing on the server side, uh, then you avoid just one more vector for someone to insert something into your system that's undesirable. Um, and then on the flip side of this, as far as security is concerned, if you're a user and you're worried about sensitive PDF documents, they now no longer have to go to the server. They're actually dealt with entirely on your computer. Lastly is scalability. Uh, PDF processing rendering is not uh, often a, uh, it, can, it can be quite CPU intensive. So the more and more, the bigger your application gets, the more users you have, the more PDFs you use. If you use servers, you end up having to scale all of these with them. Uh, and that becomes you know, expensive and, and time consuming to maintain. Uh, PDFNet.js is essentially a scalable plugin model where you can have millions and millions and billions of concurrent users and uh, because there are, every user brings with them a computer that does the processing, then uh, the scale of, scaling with PDFNet.js is essentially free and infinite. So apps are easier to develop, they're more responsive, they're more reliable, and they're more scalable. So I'll just show you a couple of quick demos of this. So the first thing I'll do is this. Okay, uh, just open the PDF. So we'll open the PDF here. It shows up. It just looks like a, a normal viewer. Uh, we can annotate it. And these are all happening like right on the my screen recording software slows it down a bit. But it's, uh, it's all happening um, right on the PDF. So when you want to save it, there's no, oh, server, can you please merge into these um, uh, annotations? You can just save it. It happens instantly. It does have to, like, want to go download it because it's still sandboxed. Um, and then you can see this has showed up in my... It's opened, um, you know, in the PDF viewer here. So another demo I'll show you that shows the um, sort of the power of doing it all locally is here. You can see the size of these files. I can take a number of PDFs here, including a couple that are about 20 megabytes. I'm going to merge them. So it <coughs> opens up these. Change the order or whatever. I decide that this is the order I want to merge them in. I can just save it right back. Merge, download. There it is. Oops. And then you have the file. It's uh, all these files together. We've also added um, some script handling for more complicated uh, uh, and interesting PDFs. Here's an example of a, uh, of a PDF that uh, implements a calculator through JavaScript. So you can see that this continues to work. So of course this is more often used in forms rather than actually implementing calculators and this is more someone having a time with PDF. 
Uh, but there are serious, uh, of course, uh, uses for this. Here's an order form. And so it looks where they have all these different uh, things to the order, and then you can fill this form, and you can fill in different quantities. And you can see these are now being processed and, and filled out. And we are happy with that address. <coughs> and I should also say this is uh, doing a bit of a data validation so that if I try to type letters in this quantity field, you can hear me. Anyways, it's not doing it. But as soon as I enter a number, it pops up. Uh, and again, I want to see that one and go straight to my Downloads folder. And then if I were to send it to someone else, they open it with whatever reader they want. And um, all the data is back in the folder. <coughs> so, one last demo um, I'll show is and this sort of illustrates one more problem with Canvas I didn't mm -hmm. mention before. Um, I will open a document with a lot of paths in it. This is a map. I'll zoom in on a section. Recording software which I'm not used for. It seems to be uh, spinning up the fans. Okay, we'll come back to this. You can see that it's continuing to render as I get closer and closer, which is, I guess, doesn't seem that fancy because it's what you'd expect a PDF, uh, PDF renderer to do. But in Canvas, there's certain memory limitations, and so the PDFJS uh, project, they just cap the uh, Canvas at a certain size. And So this is it at 200%, 270%. When you get closer, it doesn't really matter how close you get because they cap it at a certain size. It will never be render, it will never come through clear. Uh, it will always stay like this, just sort of like blowing up an image, which really is, um, uh, is not what you expect to be. Question? Yep. Sorry to interrupt, but you said you're not using Canvas, but obviously you're drawing. Yes. So what is it that you're drawing through? It's rendering everything internally, creating an image, and then just transferring that data to Canvas as an image. So it's not really using any of the Canvas commands other than here's like mm. it map data. Okay. Which might be hardware accelerated, it might have you know, might have 
issues, jankiness or whatever, but it's a it's a bitmap that you've rendered purely in JavaScript. It's all a bitmap. I mean, it should all, be just like this pixel is this. All the way pixel down to the pixel, pixel you've rendered yeah. it. Okay, yeah. thank you. server side, say under Node.js, to generate documents. I mean, in general, the things you're trying to avoid with involving a server, but that aside. Could you? Yeah, I believe you, you probably could. I mean, we also provide native um, server side uh, um, SDKs, but if you were already having Node.js for some reason you wanted to, I don't know, I'm Node.js, but I believe so, yes. But, but you have uh, creation elements in addition to rendering elements. In yes. So the implementation of 
do you guys support uh, EDM processing in a multi thread? Like, let's say in a previous example of a rendering of map, and the map is very huge. Yeah. Can I have one thread rendering the uh, PDF image and the other thread doing the annotating thing in the meantime? The annotating thing in the meantime. I mean, the rendering, the rendering we do in another thread. Uh, we don't, I believe, do like a bunch of different rendering and different threads. It's how you look at that, it doesn't really speed up that much. Um, did I understand your question? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I, I don't think JavaScript doesn't really do a multi thread. Well, we use the web workers. There is, for, like, a lot of you create a second thread. So it does the rendering in a web worker, and that's oh, okay. in a secondary thread. And oh, okay. then it comes back. Yeah. And so it doesn't tie up the UI. Oh, you don't have to wait on the UI thread and come back and forth. You can let the web worker do its thing and then come back. Oh, okay. Because the build of web worker, you'll be bringing the third party tool. No, it's JavaScript. Oh, it's JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, 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 in Galaxy, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Just to clarify, like all the processing happens in the in a background thread, so all the processing is separated from the UI thread. Oh. So you, you can do uh, essentially multi-threaded processing. If the UI is never blocked. Uh, I see. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, does this tool support dynamic media? Yeah. Dynamic yeah. video? Yeah, like, like SFA. Uh, have you heard about it? XFA, no, it doesn't support XFA. Yeah. It's sort of, XFA, I think, is an interesting technology, but it's more, it's sort of on its, on its way out. So yeah. it's not something we're really sure concentrating on right now. Yes. Uh, did you have any uh, difficulty support old version IE, like IE 89, 10 size? Yeah, it works it best on, on the JavaScript yeah. engine, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it works best on the latest um, on the latest browsers. I'm not sure the specifics. I don't think it works on IE. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure on 9. But uh, it's generally, uh, especially as far as <coughs> it's concerning um, uh, forward looking, it'll work on IE 11. How does it work on mobile? On mobile? On mobile hasn't been our, our primary concern because we don't see, right now, most app and productivity stuff on mobile, people download an app um, to do that. Um, and so we've been concentrating in that regard on our mobile SDKs. For mobile web browsers, it does it does work with some caveats, but they're, the mobile web browsers aren't at the same, like they're not as technologically progressed as the uh, as the desktop ones. Um, so if there comes a time uh, and an end when people expect this sort of productivity stuff from their mobile web browser, then um, you know this will be right. It's basically at that day should work for it if you're waiting for these mobile web browsers to catch up technologically. Yeah. So you do all your own rendering, including the fonts? Yes. Yeah. So in smaller font sizes, do you have a problem with the fonts that you get Canny, but then uh, in small sizes, you start to notice a difference between, say, fonts on Windows and fonts on Mac OS. You mean like because they're so? Well, they're small. Do they look slightly off from what you're used to as a like native font? Uh, I, mean, I don't think so. We do all the font rendering internally ourselves. We're not relying on the sort of browser font rendering. Um, I have not noticed any strangeness uh, when they're super tiny. But take a look. Maybe we can talk later. That you know, you can see something. That, and the hinting is very different from Windows to the Mac. The Mac is small size. Well, I mean, it should be on a PDF. You shouldn't see that difference, right? There shouldn't be. Well, the hints are there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, we're, we're not doing any hinting. Uh, uh, so, technically, it could be done. There's uh, no. But we are providing consistent rendering ring on all platforms. So, that's a nice thing about it. Oh, you can have Anatole first. Oh, right. Just a couple of questions. Um, first of all, how, how conformant is it to the standard? Like how, you know, what, what percentage of it does it support? I mean, it's kind of a loaded question. But, you know, <laughs> any information? I mean, obviously, it's going to work with the samples that you show us, but I'm curious. There are a lot of PDF files out there. Give it a and, try. And I, I'd be surprised if you found one that didn't work with it. Should be, it's, it's basically the same thing as our native SDKs, which have been under development for. Decade, and so we've seen, you know, 
we have to measure this fact uh, as far as we know completely. Uh, there's always, you know, maybe some file up there that, that we found something, but it, it, it's, it's a rarity now. Um, so it, it, you should be able to uh, depend on it, you know, really 100%. And the thing is, because we control the rendering and everything end to end, if you were to find a problem, like there's this file that's not rendering as expected, then we can fix that and give you a version where it does work. Okay, and I guess the, the second question is, there seem to be obviously two components, one being the rendering component where you're, you know, you already said you're creating bitmaps out of that. And then right. the second one was there's obviously an interactive component that deals with the widgets yes. and things like that. I mean, are those both, both of those available through your APIs? Yes. So since, since you actually said it, I'll, I'll use that. So you said it's, ba it's based on the technology you guys have been developing. So is it a is it a recompilation via ASM.js then, or is it a different approach? It's it's that and more. It is it's uh, um, it is it is compiled for some browsers currently to ASM.js uh, on Chrome. It's compiled to their native client. So and then ACL. Yeah, gets, yeah, uh, gets uh, high performance, and then it's continuing to develop. Like they're working on this uh, web assembly, and when that's available, then we will transition to that as well. So it, it's not based, like it really is the same technology as it's running uh, on the native side. So, too related. So is it a single library then, or have you broken it up into multiple? You mean for those? For oh, sorry, so when I, when I include it, um, am I linking against a single .js file or multiple .js files? So uh, we have uh, a single library, but basically it's an assortment of libraries. So you can choose whether you want a lean library. Like if you're just interested in, in uh, viewing, then we offer a very lean version of library. And then if you want everything, then it's a much bigger library. So we have around four different versions. And what's the, what's the size, just out of curiosity, what's the size of the minimum? I'll, I'll give you So the, 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 the minimum viewer is 3.5 uh, megabytes. <laughs> okay. Compressed. Okay. Um, you've shown the viewing, which works actually very great even on complex files. Um, does it give access to low-level editing stuff? Can I change yes. the PDF on, the, on, on cost yeah. level to... Yeah, yeah, the whole cost level API, SDF objects, everything. Um, yes, complete low-level. Low-level and then building up to you know, based on those ourselves, like higher level text extraction or these sorts of things and, if you... And that could change the viewing that you're doing. So if someone selects a, a, a PDF file and I do stuff to it on low level, could that alter what is then shown yes. to the user? Yes. Yes. It's the PDF itself. And there's one advantage I'm like, you know, don't have to go back to the server to make these changes yeah. to re-render and that sort of I understand. So you get, get back to the model again. Yeah. <laughs> you maybe, because you mentioned you have a stream, uh, a simple yeah, file scale down for view. Yeah. Would that be something that yeah. might be yeah. doing on model? Um, I don't the reason I'd ask is because we, EFJS is kind of janky on the model. I don't see that, but it's a good experience. I'll get to render a browser on that on the server. It's, well, this, the, the lean version of our library is more to cut out features you're not going to use for, um, like, just for the payload that you have to download. It's not like a sort of, you know, it's the same rendering whether or not the size of the payload has changed. Um, so it, it, for, for rendering, it would be the same. We do uh, have other ways of, of getting it that's important that it showed up in the web browser. We have other um, technology that helps for that, but it does require of the PDF, if you will, to um, make it more appropriate for mobile, mobile viewing. You're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.